My embroidery machine is working overtime. I'm making labels. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the 88 Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog, vlog number 315, for Monday, May the 22nd, 2023. Happy Victoria Day to all my Canadian watchers out there. This was the long weekend, or still is the long weekend, I guess. When you're retired, every weekend's a long weekend. So, you know, you really don't distinguish between any weekends anymore. However, for those of you that are still working people, it is a day off, and it also marks the unofficial start of summer. Um, and the weather this weekend hasn't been too bad. Saturday was a bit rainy. Uh, yesterday was nice. Um, and today is starting to look like it's going to be kind of a nice day as well. So, yes, let's get some summer going here. I think we're all overdue for that. So, let's jump right into my current projects. I am going to show you the quilt from hell. And if you watched Stephen and Walter yesterday, you heard my rant about this one. So I'm not going to go through all of that again. Just going to say that don't ever buy a pattern if you're a quilter from something called Patty's Patchwork. Uh, this is my second pattern with this uh, particular designer. And they are badly written. They're full of errors. And well, I got it together, but it's not exactly the way it's supposed to be. But it will do. Um, yesterday I pointed out the things that really bugged me about this. So if you're interested, you can check that out. And probably tomorrow on the Idiot Quilter, I will probably do a little bit more discussion about this particular designer's patterns as well. But anyways, the top is done. Uh, now I have to figure out, uh, what I'm going to do in terms of quilting it. I want something that looks, uh, sort of indigenous as well i don't know if i'll find anything like that but i'll do a search later today online to see if i can and um as far as backing is concerned i have a lot of the different fabrics that went into this quilt left over so i may actually piece a backing i don't usually piece a backing um but i think in the case of this quilt i think it would be appropriate to use you know pretty much the same fabric that's in the front of it so anyways, that quilt from hell is done and it's called Healing Waters. That's the name of the pattern and it's by Patty's Patchwork. Don't buy it. It is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Okay, so <clears throat> at the risk of going into a rant about that, because I've already done that. That's how PO'd I was with the whole thing. Let's move on to the YouTube channel of the week. Now, this isn't really a channel. Uh, as much as it's um, about a new service. Well, it's new to me. I, I think it's been around for a bit. It's like Wish. It's like Amazon, but it is neither like those two. And it seems to be all the buzz right now on the internet. And I have to admit, I have, I'm have i waiting for some stuff that I have ordered from TMU uh, as well, which I will review when it comes in, whenever that will be. And uh, I'll give you my opinion about this particular seller as well but in the meantime here's what i'm talking about so there's a whole new way to buy things online and it's a company out of china called tmu and some people are claiming it's going to give amazon a run for the money i'm not absolutely sure about that but i did check it out now the first thing i did was i watched several videos about tmu and the evidence as to whether or not this is a good thing or not, uh, or if you're just getting a whole lot of junk at a really cheap price, um, well, there's mixed reviews on this. As you can see, uh, there's a ton of videos about TMU. So before you delve into it, you may want to check these out. Nevertheless, I didn't find them conclusive, so I have ordered some stuff from TMU. And I'm going to review them here when they come. They're not supposed to arrive until the end of May. Uh, so it's a good two weeks. Maybe it'll be faster. I don't know. My initial thoughts about Team U right now is um, they seem to be very well organized. Prices aren't bad. Um, I think it depends on what you're buying, whether or not you're getting a deal, and whether or not it's quality. 
I mean, after all, everything does come from China, but you know, most of the things that we have today are made in China. So that's not usually necessarily a, a good way of rating something. So anyways, I would suggest you get on the bandwagon. You know, you don't want to have a FOMO moment and check out videos on YouTube. Just do a search for TEMU, T-E-M-U, and you're going to find more than enough information about this particular uh, shopping site. So I do have a link um, in my show notes for TEMU, but it's not really a link to any one particular site. It's just sort of a playlist of a whole lot of people talking about TEMU. There is a link for So With Stephanie and Stephen that occurs, of course, this coming Wednesday morning, as every Wednesday morning it does at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. All are welcome to join us for whatever length of time we'll be there for. You never know. Sometimes we're there until, you know, 1030, sometimes till noon, sometimes the whole day. It really depends on what either Stephanie or myself have on in the rest of the day. Okay, and there is a link to this week's past so chatty and uh and of course to uh Stephen and walter live all right so that takes me to looking outside my window and i already mentioned that this weekend was not the perfect weekend weather wise but it wasn't that horrible at least in my opinion so here's what we're looking at today um now right now it's about 7 30 in the morning so it's still not quite uh, as bright as it usually should be. A little bit overcast, I think, but things are looking green. Um, you can see there's a few things coming up in our front garden. These are hostas. Uh, they come up every year. And in that corner, down in the right-hand corner closest to the wall of the house, you see a little bunch of green. That's actually lettuce. Walter replanted a few weeks ago the lettuce in our grow lights, and this was kind of ratty looking stuff. So he pulled it up, dirt and all, because he's going to put in fresh uh, soil, and he just threw it there in the garden for now. And when he gets around to cleaning up the garden for the year, he's going to, um, he was going to throw it out. Well, guess what? It's growing and it's looking really good. So are we going to eat this? No, but we have bunnies. Bunnies come up from the backyard all the time. Now they haven't come up, they haven't discovered the lettuce yet, but we'll leave those for the bunnies to enjoy. Um, and yeah, so things are coming up in the garden, things that grow there every year, um, but eventually we'll get around to getting some flowers. It's still at night here, there's still the chance of frost. Um, I don't think we've had any actual frost right where we live but just north of us they have had it and uh they do give us some frost warnings still so you know traditionally the 24th of may is when people say it's safe to put in your plants but maybe not so we'll wait a little bit uh longer that will that will be fine i love the trees um some of the trees in our neighborhood each summer come down uh they get something uh ours knockwood have been really good and the neighbor's tree and you can see how the three trees that are there right now are starting to get big enough that they're starting to mingle and i love that i really do you know i would love to go out there build that that stupid electrical box is there nothing we can do about that um you know that's the underground service to all the houses uh, and you're not supposed to plant anything around those or paint them or do anything to them. And in fact, the city will come around. And if you do that, they will um, repaint over whatever you've put on it. And they will rip up any flowers or bushes you may have put around it. Because they have to have access to it. I know this for a fact because my father, when he was semi-retired from the local public utilities commission, um, that was his job. They kind of hired my dad back for a while after he retired. And he looked after the summer students that came in, and that's what they did. They went around to all of these boxes in the town, and if they had graffiti on them or somebody had decided they wanted to paint them a different color, they would repaint them. If they had bushes or flowers around them, they'd dig them all up and take them out. My dad hated doing that because he knew, you know, people had planted that. They were trying to beautify it, and it was his job to knock on their door and say, sorry, 
but we're here to basically restore that power box to its original ugly self and you know and this is why we're doing it and some people got really irate with my dad and that my father told him to phone the public utilities he was just doing what he was told in the whole bit um didn't do them any good because it's regulated it is a it is a safety hazard but you know we didn't have that there i'd be almost tempted to set up a little table under there and a couple of chairs and you know have to drink coffee and watch the cars go by in the neighborhood because it is kind of peaceful it is nice especially this time of year it's very green well i go on don't i <laughs> when don't i so anyways that's the kind of day that we're having and the current temperature is now 10 celsius and i think the high is in around 18 mm, that's still not really hot but it's not cold either so it's going in the right direction let's put it that way okay so talking about the right direction well that brings me to my rant today and this has to do with e-scooters you know this is a a thing that uh, they're electric scooters and there are many municipalities around that are trying some experimental alternative means of transportation for people who may not have cars or things like that so i guess the idea is these e-scooters you use your credit card uh, with them that activates them you're charged so much for so much time on them and you take them anywhere you want to go um now the thing is you're supposed to at least in our municipality they are not street worthy they have to be ridden driven on the sidewalk i have a problem with that and i'll come back to that in a moment um they do come with a helmet and you're supposed to wear it and the helmet is locked to the um e-scooter as well I'm not absolutely sure the logistics of how it works when it comes to paying it and why people can't steal them. Um, I think they lock up after your time is done. Um, and I guess probably because they've got your credit card number already, if, if that scooter, I think there's uh, GPSs on them, if that scooter suddenly disappears or goes someplace where it's not supposed to go, uh, you're going to be paying for it. So anyways my my city here has decided to try this as a pilot project well we've already had one death yep a girl well girl um i think she was 20 something she's zipping along down the sidewalk not paying a heck of a lot of attention and apparently a car jetted out from a gas station to get onto the road and hit her and she died and that is sad but you know not unexpected these things are a death trap let's face it i mean you're getting people of all ages riding these things and yeah they look like a lot of fun i have to say that but you know i'm at an age where i think i'd be tempting fate to get on one of those um you know i really don't need a broken hip or any other part of my body broken um scooters in general are not for older people regardless of what how physically fit older people may think they are um i don't know what they're like to control but it looks to me from the ones i've seen zipping around that the braking system isn't all that great and they go at quite a pace um they're not just going putt 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 they're zooming along so it was inevitable that there was going to be an accident very soon now the city of Oshawa, where I live, is putting in a uh, ordinance or something to, I'm not sure, ban them or to cease the experiment with them or something like that. Not really sure how they're doing that because city council is not sitting right now because it's like their summer break. So anyways, I feel really bad for this person who lost her life and her family and everything like that. But as I said, the writing was on the wall people get on those things and it's like they lose all sense of the fact that cars are bigger than they are and if a car hits them or they hit a car who's going to win probably the car um where this particular accident took place is not that far from where we live and i use that gas station when i need gas and it is a bad one to get out into main traffic from so i could see that the driver of the car was paying attention probably trying to figure out how he's going to get his car into traffic 
and wasn't paying any attention to what was coming down the sidewalk because it is a there is a bit of a blind spot there as well so yeah but i really feel that the onus is also on the e-scooter driver they should be aware of their surroundings they should not assume that uh, a car someone driving a car is going to see them um and you know it's not just e-scooters that have this problem people who ride bicycles have the same situation going on now this is going to be very controversial and there's going to be some of you out there who ride bikes on a regular basis and you're going to get upset with what i'm going to say but i'm sorry i watch the people on bicycles and i'm talking about the people who are bicyclists you know there are uh bike lanes on uh, not all of our roads here but on some of the major roads and yet these people are riding them on the sidewalk I have watched them go through red lights. I have watched them go through stop signs. I have watched them jet out across pedestrian crossings. Now, if there are bike lanes, bikes should not be on sidewalks. There's people pushing baby carriages. There's old people in their own little uh, motorized wheelchairs. There's kids. There's, old, there's adults. Everybody uses sidewalk. It behooves a bicyclist not to obey them. Now, I know there's going to be some of you out there and go, well, no, cars don't pay attention. Uh, it's a death trap for bicyclists. You know, they try to obey the rules of the road. People open up their car doors and knock people off their bikes. I'm sorry. You're on a bike. You're smaller. You pay attention. A car will hurt you. It is bigger. But I've seen it. And I do not have any respect for those people. I really don't. In many cases, they're very arrogant um, about it. They feel that they own the road. You don't. If a municipality has put in bike lanes for you, it's a courtesy. It's not a right. As much as you want to protest it, it is not. Cars rule. Sorry, but they do. So you have to be careful. And you are a vehicle. I remember when I was in school, I think I took a bike safety course one summer or something like that. And what they told us was, you yield to the bigger things. You obey. You are a vehicle as well. You obey the stop signs. You signal when you're going to make a turn. And, you know, they... Sh showed us the hand signals and everything like that uh, to do. But you watch a lot of people on bikes. They don't do that. So you don't know when you're at an intersection and they're right beside you. Oh, wait. Why is a bicycle right beside a car if it's not a bike lane? Think about that. So the car is going to make, say, a right-hand turn. And the bicyclist is right here. If the bicyclist isn't paying attention or if the guy in the car doesn't see the bicyclist because sometimes they're in your blind spot, someone's going to get creamed and it's going to be the bicyclist, right? So I guess what I'm saying is these things are death traps. And if you're going to ride them, then you have to be aware of that for your own protection and for the protection of the people around you as well. Don't be crying about people in cars. I don't think people in cars are purposely trying to kill people on e-scooters and bicycles. I really don't. But accidents happen. So it's the onus is on both the people on the two wheels and the people in the four wheels to be aware of their surroundings and, you know, do the best they possibly can to obey the law. Well, first of all, not do the best, do it obey the laws this goes for the bicyclist people too and the e-scooter people and to you know be aware that there could be disaster just around the corner okay so yeah that's my rant about bicyclists today and as i said if you're a biking enthusiast good for you i know it's very healthy go on trails that kind of thing and I don't want to hear the email comments saying, well, some people have to have bicycles because it's part of their job. You know, like uh, skip the dishes, DoorDash, all those ones. Mm-hmm. I get it. But they still need to obey the rules of the road. 
Okay. Let's have some coffee. So, new products this week. Well, I haven't really bought some anything of any sort. Well, it's not true. I have. But I'm going to save that for what's new in the 3D corner. But before I get into that, let's take a look at the grow lights, shall we? And so let me see if I can find my pictures here. Things are doing very well. And uh, here we have a grow light number one. Now we do have one tray that is empty. Well, it's not. Walter has seeds in there. And I'm not sure what he planted. I don't know if he planted more lettuce or something else in there. But there is something else there. But the lettuce is doing very well here. And the basil, of course. And this is grow light number two. Again, um, our onions are getting a little wild here. Um, this part of lettuce is coming up. This is an older, older lettuce. So it will soon have to be uh, pulled up and new lettuce planted there. And again, he's got something here. I'm not sure what it is. Okay, the jungle. And it is a jungle. That's our green peppers and our tomatoes. And yes, they're doing very well. And the green peppers especially are getting huge. There they are. And we do have some red peppers happening. I think that's a red pepper back in there. And that's a red pepper there. And there are tomatoes in this jungle as well. Now, one of the tomato plants was not looking very good. So Walter decided to take it outside and put it on the deck. That's where we'll put our main stuff uh, um, later in the season uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, he doesn't suspect that it will survive uh, for several reasons. One, it just may be too hot out there. He is going to put it in a big pot of water, a pan underneath it, like you see what we have here. And uh, when we go to the East Coast and, you know, see what happens. Probably the squirrels will get at it, although they don't really enjoy um, green tomatoes we have found. They like them when they're just at their peak of freshness and ripe, and then they take one bite and giggle off in a corner somewhere. But anyways, and my salary. Okay, there it is. I have planted it in a little pot. And it, it's a nice looking little plant. It really is. So, I mean, even if it doesn't bear, you know, edible salary or something from it, if it keeps, you know, gets a little bushy like this, that's okay. But I'm concerned about the amount of light. This was on my kitchen counter next to my philodendrons. You see one of the philodendrons peeking out here on the corner. So I moved it downstairs into the jungle. So it'll get more light uh, in there and we'll see what happens again another growing experiment so yeah things are coming along quite nicely there it'll be nice to get our container garden in but as i said we're not doing that until we come back from the east coast which may retard the time may take a little longer into the season before we really start harvesting it but otherwise it'll die if we're gone because they need because it is so hot on our deck because it's a western exposure the plants have to be watered every day out there. And so we'll have nobody to water them when we're away. So yeah, we'll hang on to that. And as I said earlier, uh, it's still cool here at night. So it won't hurt to wait a little bit longer. Okay. So that brings me to what I did buy this week. And I told you I was going to show it to you when uh, I got to the 3D corner. And uh, hmm, let me get it. I should have brought it over. Okay, this is what I bought. This I've talked about before. This is a direct drive extruder by Creality, which is the name of my 3D printers. And later today, I'm going to install it. Um, it takes a bit to install, but it's not that difficult. I've done one before. And the reason I bought this one, and I can show you what it looks like in the box. Kind of awkward to hold up here. Let's see if I can take it in. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. This little monster. So this is a direct drive extruder. Um, usually when you put filament into a 3D printer, it goes through something called a Bowden tube. And it is what it says. It's a plastic tube that can handle higher temperatures. 
and the filament goes through it and directed into the hot and that melts the filament and that's where all the filament comes out and builds whatever you're building. But Bowden tubes wear out and on a fairly regular basis. They, although they can withstand higher temperatures, they do eventually break down and your filament gets stuck and then you have to replace the Bowden tube, which is not a hard thing to do. And you buy the Bowden tube by the meter. So that's easy enough, but it's annoying. Um, with a direct drive, you avoid the tube. And I have found since I've had one on one of my other printers, I have not had to do much maintenance to it whatsoever. It's been great. Um, occasionally, I've had, I think once I've replaced the nozzle on the hot end, and that's it. So the other day, my um, one of my printers was giving me something called a thermal run uh, runaway, which means that the temperature is getting way too high than it should, and it's not being regulated. And so the system, machine such, shuts itself down, which is a good thing. Because if it didn't have that, you do have a risk of a fire. So I was trying to figure out why it was doing that. Then I realized one of the wires on something called a thermistor uh, had come away from where it's attached. Now, I have done a crude wiring job on these existing printers, the ones that just have the Bowden tube, because I didn't want to open them up underneath and run the wires to the circuit board from there. So every now and then when I had to replace the thermistor, or uh, one of the other parts that had wires, I would just pigtail them into the wires that were running into the machine and go with that. And I'd use these little marettes, they're called, little screwy things to hold the wires together. And occasionally they drop off. Then the wires come apart and yeah, then things stop working. Well, that's what happened the other day. So I got thinking, you know, I've been debating on buying, an, uh, switching all my printers over to direct drive. Ah, this is my excuse. So they're about 60 bucks on Amazon to buy the kit for this. And uh, I decided, okay, on that printer, I'm going to replace it. So that's what I'm going to do uh, later today. Um, and uh, I have to refresh my memory on how to do that. But there is a video so that it is a good thing. So yeah, eventually all three of my 3D printers will have direct drives on them. Because um, as I said, I really like them. Um, they're great. So yeah, that's what's new and that's what I wanted to talk about on the 3D corner today. So let's go to Blast from the Past in terms of trips. And this is Melbourne on December the 21st, 2016. Which by the way, December the 21st is Walters and my anniversary. So we were in Melbourne for our anniversary in 2016, which was probably our, let's see, how many years ago was that now? Seven? So that would have been our 33rd anniversary. This year, it's our 40th. Okay, so here's the video. And here we are. We're just going into the pier at uh, Melbourne. And in a couple hours, we'll be getting off and uh, going on an excursion. And it's a short excursion today, so we may be able to explore the downtown part of Melbourne as well. So oh, this is the 88th floor of the Eureka building in Melbourne and we're standing out here on the observation platform. You can see a great view of the city from here. And I'll take a few more shots as we walk around the building. And now we're outside looking through this uh, caged material that's right here. I'm looking through glass and I'm trying not to get a glare as best I can, but you can see the city down below us. It's quite a nice city. Apparently, it's been voted for six years in a row by The Economist magazine as the most livable city in the world.
And over there in the distance, you can see our ship, the celebrity, Solstice. Let's see if I can get a little closer up to it. So that's what we came into the harbor on. And you can see how far away we are from the ship. This is the Shrine of Remembrance in the Royal Botanical Gardens in Melbourne. And this is a, a cenotaph, basically, honoring the fallen soldiers of the first two First World Wars and Korea and Vietnam and peacekeeping missions. And in the distance from the shrine, you can see the building that we were just up, the Eureka building. And here's from the very front of the Shrine of Remembrance. Just panning around, you can see it's sort of in the center of the city. Sort of a 360 degree shot here. And there's a bloody fly on my face right now while I'm doing this. And this is from the steps at the front of the Shrine of Remembrance. You can see the whole city laid out in front of us. So, this is also part of the grounds of the Shrine of Remembrance which this is a big stylized poppy right here. And underneath the shrine is a museum. And some more shots. It's a good vantage point to take uh, shots of the city and really the city is quite lovely. These are the Fitzroy Gardens and this is the conservatory. And down a little bit further on, supposedly there is a reconstructed uh, house that James Cook, the explorer, lived in in England, but they put it together brick by brick here. And it is the oldest uh, building in Melbourne. So this is inside the conservatory. Yeah, a lot of high range. Fuchsia. Okay, And we're heading towards Cook's Cottage. And this down here is Cook's Cottage. This is Cook's Cottage here, which is a separate entrance fee. So we're not going to bother going in. More of the gardens along here. I 
they're very pretty very lush until you hit this part which I don't know what you would call this sort of a rock garden kind of a formation thing they seem to have quite a diversity of landscaping here this is the main shopping district of Melbourne and it's all a lot of high-end shops like Cartier, Gucci, all that kind of thing. And they have a tram that runs down the center of the street as well and that's uh, part of their main uh, transportation in their downtown core. They supposedly have a small subway as well, have about a half a dozen stops. It's a funny sort of attitude, you know, connection with Christmas. Because although it's all it's summer when we have Christmas, all our traditions come from the Northern Hemisphere. So, you know, when I was growing up, we'd sit down in 40 degrees heat, you know, over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'd be eating roast turkey and steamed plum pudding and brandy butter. And Okay, we're going to stop here and let people off on the big screen and there'll be thousands of people and she's at four o'clock in the middle of the night watching the soccer live or um, our Australian Prime Minister um, made a very historic this is going back about eight years a very historic and there's the clocks there on our left as you can see it's still a big meeting place <laughs> These little, um, this little red brick building on our left, underneath the railway tracks, uh, they're called the Banana Vaults, and they're across the river. And you can see that the Yarra River is a bit wider here, so boats could actually turn around. So they'd come up from the Port Phillip Bay, and this is as far as they'd come. They'd disgorge their passengers and their goods, turn around and go out again. And so now we're sailing out of the Melbourne Hot Harbour and on our way to our last destination, which is Sydney. And that takes me to events in the past week. Uh, we had a friend over for dinner on Thursday night. Um, it was his birthday. Uh, so uh, we had him over and uh, he's, you've heard us talk about this friend before. Uh, I've known him for years. Um, I like to help him out every now and then. He, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but his life is not as nice as it could be. So, you know, every now and then we like to, we used to have him over every other Thursday for dinner and things like that. But that was get, getting a little much uh, with that. So we haven't seen him for a while. I usually send him an email once a week um, just to check on him, make sure everything's going fine in his life, anything like that. And so I knew his birthday was coming up in May. So we made arrangements for him to come over. And we had a little birthday celebration. And uh, that was fun. That was nice. Uh, we had pop-up so day on Saturday, this past Saturday. Um, I think that the height of it was about 30 some of us there. I was experimenting with a new camera setup. Usually what I do on any of my craft and chats and pop-up so days and things like that is I run three different computers. So I've got different shots around the room, depending on where I move to. And I have a switching uh, board, a stream deck, and I just hit a button to switch the cameras around. But it's a bit cumbersome to do that because the way the stream deck works with Zoom, unlike any of the other programs, is that sort of like a toggle. So you have to toggle through each camera until you get the one that you want. And I find that a pain in the butt. And I have a tendency to move out of one shot and into a different shot and not move the camera, like not change the camera over. 
So I thought I'd tr set it up whereby I had three cameras going at once, but all in different parts of the room. So basically, wherever I moved, I was in the shot. Now, having said that, I'm thinking that's a little egotistical, thinking people want to see me every second. Not really. I was just doing it to be, you know, it's easier for me. And that seemed to work out okay. So I think that's what I'm going to do from now on. Uh, it makes my life a little bit easier when I'm doing video and I'm trying to sew as well. But anyways, pop-up sew day was great. It, it always is. It always is. Had a few new people. That was nice. Um, saw some lovely projects that people are working on. And yeah, we just had a really good uh, time. And uh, so next one, don't know when it's going to be. Probably the latter half of June. Uh, because first couple of weeks of June will be down in the East Coast. Which also means that Craft and Chat, which was usually the first Wednesday of every month, will not happen in June because we will not be here. Um, so I'll try to make it up with a pop-up so day later in the month. Um, and what else happened this week? Well, I have a couple of things in for repair. Uh, I was using my serger the other day, and I talked a little bit about this on So Chatty as well. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details at length but needless to say i did something you should never do with a serger and that is sew over top of a pin uh or see a serger has a blade in it and the blade hit the pin i forgot it was there and broke the blade so it's off to ultimate sewing for the service person roy uh is his name to replace my blade so i imagine i'll get it back sometime this week and then my big expensive industrial strength iron was making a weird smell couldn't figure out what it was but it was becoming toxic um so we took that into uh reliable the manufacturer of it because they're in just in toronto and uh when you know they couldn't get it to stink <laughs> but they did find a, a minor little uh maintenance issue so they're going to do that and i imagine sometime later part of this week maybe that'll come back as well yeah and then I was having a little problem with my embroidery machine. Well, I, it wasn't really a problem, but it was making some noises and whatnot. And I knew, okay, this thing needs some oil. But I do clean it regularly. I do oil it regularly. But there are some spots where you have to take it apart to oil it. There's actually quite a few oiling points on it. And usually I just take it in to Ultimate Sewing and have the service person, Roy, um, do all of that for me but walter said he could do it he's done his own and uh so i said okay well this was saturday we're talking about it. i said okay sometime on sunday we'll you know let's go at it and get this thing oiled well don't i have a little elf <laughs> i got up sunday morning came down here looked over at my embroidery machine and there was a note on it and it was from walter and he said yeah he oiled it all and everything uh, he says you better run it just to in case there's excess oil or whatever in it runs like a dream purrs like a kitten so yeah walter did all of that for me i also learned a couple of things that i did not know that walter pointed out to me there's a little door i didn't know about this on top of the machine that has a big long wick an oiling wick in there and that's easy to get at and to give some oil and he said that one was bone dry and that's where i suspect i was starting to hear a little bit of grinding in there and that's not good um uh, now nope purrs like a kitten so that basically has saved a trip and some money us uh, taking him to the shop for that since walter knows how to do it so the next time i'll come around to that i'll get Wal walter to do it with me there so i will learn how to do it as well yes i can read the manual That's all I'm going to say. Yes, I can read the manual. Because I know someone's going to tell me. Read your manual. Yeah. Okay, so what's coming up? Uh, this Saturday, Walter and I are going off to a sew day at the club. Um, his instructor for his sewing class is having a sew day with the people in the class. And I usually tag along. So I guess I'll have to find a project to work on that day. So I'm sort of in between projects right now. Um, so that'll be kind of fun. It's 
you know, I got to lug up some stuff with me for it in the whole bit. Um, that part I don't look forward to. But different people, different venue. It's nice for a change kind of a thing. So I think that's about it for me for today. And uh, I hope you have a great week and hope the weather's nice and you get outside uh, for it. Um, I always seem to be inside sewing. Um, maybe I should take my sewing machine if there's one nice day out on the deck and do a little sewing there. Mm, there's a thought. Okay, so have a good week and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.